on Christmas, there is always the clash of two claims. First, the birth of Jesus invites us all to joy. The angels announce to the shepherds, do not be afraid, listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. And that message of joy from heaven delivered on the night of Jesus' birth is echo at Christmas celebration everywhere. But, but then the harsh and painful realities of life also break the hearts of many people. We are still facing the COVID-19 pandemic. Many experience unemployment, financial problems, health reasons. And then lately in our country, the Patankali, land strike tragedy, the floods, etc., etc. Now, do we Christians dare to proclaim joy to those in serious trouble and with broken hearts. Yes, we can. The first Christian night 2,000 years ago was indeed a holy night. But to say that the Christmas event was all totally calm, bright and peaceful is also not true. Jesus was born in a country which was certainly no seed of calm and tranquility, but a scene of bitter woes, violence, and almost perpetual strife. Of course, even until today in Israel or in Palestine. Jesus, the Son of God, didn't even have a decent place to be born. He was born in the stable, in the cold of the winter night. So, the peace, the joy and peace accompanying the birth of Jesus were mixed, mixed, with manifestations of fears, anxieties, hatred, injustice, discrimination, exploitation, and oppression. Generally, we say it's mixed feelings. For example, the census order by the Emperor Caesar Augustus was a reminder that the lowly and powerless people were at the whim and fancy of the Roman masters who wanted to make a census for the purpose of taxation and military inscription. Then we have the shepherds. Don't think that they were the respectable, simple folks of the Jewish society. No, they were not. They were considered the worst people by the Jewish society and for many good reasons. They were regarded as untidy by nature, living lives not very different from the lives of the animal that tended. They were not allowed to enter and pray in the temple. And the courts would not accept their testimony since they were believed to be liars, dishonest, thieves, and violent people. So the shepherds were poor and oppressed people. And yet, the Son of God has come into the world for them. Do not be afraid, 
For today the Savior has been born to you. Jesus make it very clear from the very beginning where he stood, he identified himself with the poor, the lowly, the oppressed and the suffering people. Our Archbishop Julian, we would like to use the four L's, the four L's. And then we have the creed. The creed is supposed to symbolize for us tenderness and love. But it also reminds us of the difficult situation of Joseph and the pregnant Mary. They had no choice but to take shelter in a stable because there was no room for them in the ink. And then, as if without mercy and with hazard to Mary's life and her unborn child, nature issued its own decree. Mary could not tahan anymore. The hour of birth had come. So, we have this other side, the unpleasant side of Christmas, which we often overlook. It tells us that our Christian faith is not an avoidance or an escape from the harsh and painful realities of life. Our Christian faith is a challenge to face or confront the harsh and painful realities of life through our faith in God and His promises and the strength that comes from our faith. At a time when the world was dominated by the Romans, when the people of God were ruled by a tyrant, and the poor and the powerless were discriminated against even by the official Jewish religion, God chose to send His Son. So the so-called bad time or unfortunate time was also God's appointed time, a special time of grace is Kairos. All the persons involved in the first Christmas had more than their share of troubles, difficulties, pains and sorrows. Yet, their hearts sang with joy at Jesus' birth. So what is Christmas? To put simply, Christmas celebrates the tender and unconditional love of God for us, which is manifested in the little baby Jesus. Today, Jesus, our Savior, has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. That is God's gift to us, Jesus, His Son, given to us as our Lord and Savior as the way, the truth, and the lies. And Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And for us is the joy of salvation in Jesus. For that we rejoice and celebrate today. Christmas is a feast of joy. The first word of the New Testament is an invitation to joy. There was the angel's greeting to Mary. Rejoice! Then, nine months later, the angel announced to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. A Savior has been born to you. We are called not to be afraid, but to be joyful. Because Jesus, Emmanuel, is with us and for us. I like these words of Blessed Julian Norwich. And it's very radical, very radical, but very scriptural. 
She says, the greatest honor you can give Almighty God, greater than all your sacrifices and mortifications, is to live joyfully because of the knowledge of His love in Jesus. I will live joyfully no matter what. So sisters and brothers, many of us may be living in bad times, gloomy times, but do not lose the Christmas cheer, the Christmas spirit, which is joy.